The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light? Sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Doctor. Assalamu alaikum, Abdullah wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for inviting me to your office. Jazakumullah khair. It's been about a week since we've met and uh, I'm so excited to be honest with you. Um, I remember uh, you invited me to your place. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we started discussing regarding um, the uh, existence, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We went through um, um, the beginning, we've covered um, what, what, what's been provided, for the reports, what we know of um, the existence before the creation of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. And um, now we're gonna go through um, the period of uh, the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So inshallah, um, I'm really looking forward uh, to hear uh, about the life of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny. Inshallah, um, if um, you can tell me regarding the period of the pregnancy of Amina bint Wahab salam, was she warned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the uh, coming of his holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin al-mashumin. Allahumma sallahu alayhi wa sallam, muhammadin wa alayhi muhammad. Um, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, um, he um, um, was known um, during, at least before his prophethood, that he would be a prophet amongst, if you like, the, um, those who were close to him. Uh, um, and um, even before the birth of the Prophet, before the conception of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, um, they knew there was something special about uh, Abdullah, the father uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib. And um, I think we did mention um, last time um, that uh, um, there were indications First of all, we did mention that Abdul Muttalib was um, Allah's authority on earth, the Hujjah, um, and he and his successor, his Wasi, was Abu Talib, and uh, they knew that um, uh, the Prophet will be the uh, of the final Prophet will be the son of uh, Abdullah. This was before. Uh, uh, the Prophet was born even, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And, um, and yes, when um, uh, Abdullah sallallahu alayhi married uh, Amina bint Wahab, uh, and I think I did mention last time that uh, there, were, there were always people who wanted to, if you like, terminate about this mission uh, of the final Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Uh, the prophet of the end of time, they used to call it. Um, so they da targeted, if you like, there are um, some scholars claim that uh, the, the grandfather uh, of, of Abdullah, that is uh, Hashim, he was targeted because he died uh, under suspicious circumstances. Um, and Abdullah also was uh, seen to be targeted by some people uh, who wanted to who wanted to abort this mission and try to terminate it? Uh, we have in the report, in for example, in Bihar al Anwar, that um, when they had gone on a hunting mission, Abdullah, um, he noticed that there are a group of people who wanted to 
who are about to attack uh, Abdullah. And it, uh, the person who saw it was Wahab, the father of Amina. Um, and it is reported that he saw um, angels or individuals coming from the sky uh, protecting uh, Abdullah from those attackers and repelling the attackers. Uh, and according to that report, uh, Wahab decided uh, that he wanted to marry his daughter to, to Abdullah. Um, there are such reports that he was, um, uh, there was um, divine um, intervention, if you like, to protect Abdullah salam uh, from harm, which he was, the, uh, which, he <coughs> which he was. And the Prophet, uh, and, and Abdullah eventually married Amina uh, bin Wahab, the daughter of Wahab. And um, again, on one of his trips, um, at, as they say, Ghazat uh, al-Sham, he died, um, it says that he died. Um, and some scholars say that he died in suspicious circumstances. So they're putting a question mark on the fact that he, w whether he died a natural death. So Abdullah died, passed away uh, when uh, Amina was pregnant with her son, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was born uh, after the death of his, far uh, his father. And um, yes, there were miracles, if you like. So Amina, sorry, coming back to your question, Amina did knew that uh, he would be a prophet. He was someone special. Did and she have like a dream or? She, she had dreams and in uh, uh, some instances they say she had ilham. She had um, um, a vision, uh, if, if you like. Uh, revelation. A revelation, uh, a kind of revelation. Okay. Um, about uh, this boy. And uh, she, it is said that when the Prophet ﷺ was born, she could see uh, light shining and she could, as if she could see the palaces of um, uh, Persia and Rome um, uh, shaking. Allah. And basically that was... that was during the pregnancy or... No, the, 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 when, the, the, when the, the Prophet dream. was born. Oh, when the when Holy the Prophet, Prophet was born. Was born. Um, it is as if she could see um, basically the empires, the Persian Empire and Roman Empire. Hmm. Um, shaking because they were th this was a sign that uh, a sign that they um, uh, will come under the influence or at least um, uh, of, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa and um, so this she saw she was uh, uh, prote protecting this child um, because she know he, he was someone special uh, of course herself she she was on the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam just like her, her father was the tribes abdullah of course as i said uh, her father her, her husband abdullah and the fathers of uh, abdullah that is uh, abdul muttalib and hashim they were on the religion of ibrahim alayhi salam and um, another report says that when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was born um, uh, people in mecca and other places uh, they found uh, their idols had fallen, had fallen to the ground on their faces. And again, that was indicative of the fact that someone, at least this, this, this newborn, uh, would be the one who will eradicate. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is indicating, idols. he's giving signals to uh, Bani Adam that the seal of the Prophet has arrived and basically making an effect into the world. If you like, yes. Uh, basically, he's giving signals that uh, someone is born that has been born that will uh, 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 address these. He will eradicate, for instance, the idols, uh, and his religion will will spread um, not only in Mecca and that um, Arabian Peninsula, but wider afield. These were the indications, if you like, um, or miracles or dreams that, and there were many, some others as well. Uh, to indicate that the Prophet ﷺ was born, and these were the things that which happened during the, at the time of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. So during the pregnancy, the um, Amina ﷺ was, um, if you can, um, tell me about who, how it, where did it happen? Yes, there are, we have reports that uh, Amina says that this child speaks to me. She has, uh, she used to hold conversation with the child. Um, 
there are such reports and she not only before that she, it was confirmed to her that the things that she had heard that there, there's going to be a special child that she will deliver and he will be the, the prophet of the end of time if you like <coughs> and uh, this confirmation was the fact that she could communicate she could or at least he this child was communicating holding conversation with the, with with the with his mother um, and um, uh, um, th this was during during pregnancy, if you like, where, while Abin ibn Tuhab salam was pregnant with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, um, when the Holy Prophet was born, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was uh, in Mecca. Yes. Um, any any anything we know uh, regarding the event of his birth and uh, the early years of his. Uh, Yes. Life or what happened? So we know his mother, mm -hmm. salam, she she as well passed away in a very young age, mm -hmm. and uh, the Holy Prophet was five, six years old. Yes, six years old. Okay, so what what happened uh, during that period up until um, the death of uh, his mother? Yeah, um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam obviously was taken care of by his mom in the early days and the early stages of his. Uh, life in this so world. So he stayed in Mecca for a while before? <laughs> That's right, they stayed in Mecca, they were in Mecca. It was under the guardianship of, uh, um, if you like, the master of Quraysh, uh, a leading figure, uh, Sayyid uh, Abdul Muttalib, who was, who has uh, uh, a special status, if you like, uh, socially amongst the tribes of Quraysh, uh, uh, the tribes of Mecca hmm. <coughs> and the clan, especially the, um, he belonged to the the most important clan of uh, Quraysh, which is Bani Hashim, and he was the leader of Bani Hashim, if you like. So, um, <coughs> uh, the mother, um, Amr ibn Tuhab, salam, she used to take care of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and um, uh, it was the, the, the guardianship of, the Pro of Abdul Muttalib was there. He was very vigilant, he was very, um, caring about uh, the status of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the well-being of the Prophet uh, sallallahu alayhi wa And of, it's, it's well known that it was a tradition that they used to give the child um, for wet nursing <coughs> and the child would live <coughs> uh, for a period of time with his wet nurse outside the city, others outside the city of Mecca and um, uh, for his health and for his well-being and teaching him the obviously the language, the Arabic language, um, with the accent of the uh, peop desert people living outside Mecca. Uh, this was tradition, and they followed the same tradition here. And the Prophet uh, was taken care of by um, Halima <coughs> Saadiyah, a lady called Halima from uh, uh, the tribe of Saad. Halima Saadiyah, and um, this was going on when she he was weaned off uh, uh, breastfeeding she was returned he was returned sorry Halima uh, said they returned him to uh, to his uh, mother uh, in Mecca and of course in the meantime they used to go and visit him every now and then so this was the if you like the very early years um, uh, when he came back again the, the uh, Abdul Muttalib was taking uh, special care of him and um, um, there are a lot of stories that he was always with him. He's sitting in his place where they were saying that, for example, Abdul Muttalib had a, a, a special place sitting uh, next uh, uh, Al Kaaba, uh, and none of his sons, for example, would dare come near, you know, sit in his place. But the Prophet, the young uh, uh, Muhammad, used to go and sit in his place and do what, whatever. And he used to tell they they wanted to remove him so that Abdul Muttalib would come and sit. He said, "No, oh, no, leave him. Let him. Let me just." Do whatever he likes. So he, he, he loved uh, the, uh, the Prophet uh, uh, in no ordinary way. He, he, his love for the Prophet sallallahu was extraordinary. Of course, he knew who he would be, and uh, his care for his well-being and safety was also uh, extraordinary. And um, and of course, uh, you had Abu Talib as well, who was uh, there at the background, if you like, the son of Abdul Muttalib. Uh, the uncle of this young child, but he had uh, uh, his 
his providing his care, if you like, for the for the young child, young Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wa Mashallah. Now his his mom Amina alayhi salam. Did she remain single after? Yes, the um, death of Abdullah. That, that she never married. Um, okay. Uh, she uh, never married. She continued taking care of the uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa and letting him play, letting letting him grow, uh, grow up. And um, was was you know, unfortunately, certain school of thoughts uh, claim that the, the the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa was illiterate, did not know how to read and write. Do we have uh, narrations proving that during his uh, early years was um, being taught the um, language, the Arabic language? Yeah. Or do we have any narrations that claim that he didn't even need to be taught, that he knew it already? Yeah. Was uh, well, we'll come into this uh, uh, subject, if, if like, in, um, I'll cover this, inshallah, in more detail. Okay. Uh, but yes, he... Um, um, on the issue of um, uh, going, if you like, to school or being taught uh, by some individuals, no, he, he was never taught. Uh, it's not known that he was ever taught. Um, there is a discussion as to when we have in the ayah, in the Quran, an nabiyul ummi what does that mean? Um, I don't know how much time we have whether to sort of um, talk about it now or we, we hold we probably need a, a special it's up to you you tell me your schedule yeah i'm free yeah um in terms in terms of being schooled or being uh, given uh, to be taught by individuals um we have that he was never ever taught by anyone and we have it in the quran that he didn't have this. He never sort of received any teaching from anyone. Mm -hmm. um, this is something which is established. Um, some uh, people say that uh, Ummi means he couldn't read and write, which of course is not true. And as I said, um, when we have more time, we can um, talk about that in details. And I, I can give you the verses from the Quran and the hadith from Ahlul Bayt salam to that effect. Uh, but inshallah, we'll get to that uh, a bit later. Um, um, I wanted to, uh, you know, talk about his early days and um, also the fact that about his mom when um, she passed away, if you like, we can, we can raise that. Please. So what, what happened? We, uh, we said uh, that um, she passed away five to six years after the birth of the Holy Prophet yeah. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi wa sallam. What happened? How comes? Yes, she'd... Um, She'd gone to Medina to see her, or to see her uncles, mm -hmm. and um, and um, there were people there, or some scholars, if you like, um, and in fact uh, there were, um, they say, ahbar, um, uh, uh, Jewish scholars. When they saw uh, the child, uh, it is, it's narrated that he asked, uh, one of them asked, "What's your name?" He said, "Ahmed." And uh, he asked his mom, um, and he said, can I see, he, he asked, talked to him a little bit, and he said, can I see his back? He saw his back, there was a mark on his back. And he said to his mother, to Amina, alayhi salam, that this child will be a prophet. And she said, how do you know? He said, we have it in our books, we have it in our records that the child, uh, the, the prophet of the end of time uh, mm -hmm. will have these kind of attributes and he have a mark on his shoulder on his uh, on the back and uh, talking to him and finding out his name and given the fact that uh, he showed me the mark which is on his back this will be the prophet of, uh, of the end of time how did and the priests um, um, ask these questions how did they reach to Amina was it something oh, that they they, uh, they, they wh while she was in Medina um, at least while well, she was in Madrid, this was a probably a, a, a coincidence uh, uh, and an encounter where they came across him. Uh, he and, and there there are uh, or there were uh, uh, Jewish people and Jewish scholars in Medina because uh, it is said that they they came here because they uh, were awaiting uh, 
for the f final prophet, for the prophet of the end of the time. So they knew that there was going to be a prophet. And we have okay. it in the Quran, uh, which says that they, they used to, um, uh, when the Jewish people in Medina were being harassed by the uh, disbelievers, uh, the unbelievers, the idol worshippers, they used to say, the Jewish people used to say to these idol worshippers that uh, they used to harass them and persecute them, they persecute the Jews, mm. um, the, the Jews in Medina. And they used to say that when the final prophet comes, he will protect us and we will seek refuge with him. And you will not be able, you the idolaters would not be able to uh, harass us and persecute us. Uh, this is mentioned in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, I think ayah number 86, 87 kind of thing, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yes, they were there. They were there. In fact, they had come there waiting for the Prophet sallallahu um, alaihi And uh, so one of the scholars who were obviously it was their job to, he was a scholar. He was reading. He knew uh, what he was looking for, and he saw the Prophet. And uh, it is said that um, Amina, uh, because she realized that this is not her hometown, and she realized that she he became known. Okay, she was concerned. And she decided to leave Mecca to go back home, to uh, uh, sorry, leave Medina to go back home to Mecca. And uh, uh, on her way uh, out of Medina, it's, this is the sort of report that we have that mm -hmm. she passed away. She got ill and passed That's away. That's quite strange, though. Um, and uh, obviously, she must have been with other people that they, um, after whatever the burial, they buried her in Medina. So on, they mm. went back with the young uh, child, young Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They went back to uh, Mecca and reported it to his grandfather, uh, Abdul Muttalib alayhi salam, of what happened and obviously delivered the child. Uh, Must have been very difficult for the Holy Prophet. Peace and blessings of course. Because uh, I mean, I mean, he, he witnessed it, he was there. Uh, he lost his mother, so it mm. must have been very painful. Um, uh, and. Uh, it's a northern thing. Anyone, any child of that age, he was six. Mm -hmm. That uh, at least some reports say six, some reports say eight. But uh, of that age, if they lose their mom, any child, if they lose their mom, they will be uh, devastated. Mm, devastated. Uh, Abu Talib alayhi salam, when his wife Fatima bint Asad alayhi salam, she gave him the good news about the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He said, "I give you the good news that." you will give birth to this boy's uh, wasi, this boy's successor. The time and after the uh, passing away of, her, of his mother, Amina bint Wahab, Fatima bint Asad was proactively involved in, in caring for the Prophet